Bible prophesies the day when the glory of the Lord will cover the entire world. But what will the manifestation of glory actually look like? Craig Broker shared at Dominion Conference about his own experience in the manifest glory and what the coming wave will look like. You'll want to hear Craig's message, so stay with us. Welcome to Lifeline Today. So glad you've tuned into the broadcast, Joan. Mm -hmm. uh, let me encourage our viewers, if you uh, want to get into the prayer center, make your phone calls now. Start yeah, calling right. in. Uh, know that it gets busy through the program. So please do that. And we just love hearing from you. We do actually have on our set many praise reports. We often don't get the time to get to them. But yeah. uh, we hear a lot of good feedback, so many, God bless you for that. Many, many answers to prayer, Dick. Yeah. Yeah. we got a great program for you today. Craig <laughs> Broker is going to be ministering, and he was at our Dominion Conference here just recently, Joan. Mm -hmm. And uh, he talks about his favorite subject, right? His life story. His life story. He talks glory. about the glory. And if you don't know what he's talking about, <laughs> he's talking about the actual manifest glory, the very manifest presence of God that is so amazing, Joan, yeah. uh, so overwhelming, so tangible, mm. uh, there's no mistaking it. And he's going to share mm -hmm. some experiences about that. And you know, the Bible does prophesy that there is coming a time when the whole earth will know of the, have the knowledge of the glory of the Lord, yeah. or will be covered with the glory yeah. of the Lord. It's coming, and I can't wait. It's prophesied <laughs> multiple times yeah. uh, in the Old Testament. And so it's something that very often we quote. And by the way, that became somewhat of a theme in the conference as well, not just from Isaiah 60, but the other uh, scriptures as well about the glory of God. And so, but Craig, I don't know if anybody can just minister on this subject quite like Craig He Broker. lives for it. Yeah, well, he's experienced it many <laughs> times. And you're going to yeah. hear some very interesting experiences. He's going yeah. to talk about uh, a very good mentor of his, Kenneth Hagin, yeah. who also experienced it. So we're going to go into the service right now. This is Dominion Conference 2018. Craig Broker ministering on the manifestation of the glory. Yeah. What's the light going to look like in full manifestation in the house of God? And I went, <laughs> you know, my favorite scripture, when I first came to the Lord, and I didn't even know, I mean, I didn't know the Bible. I, I, when I first came back to the Lord at 19 years of age was 2 Chronicles 5. And I want to read it, and then I'm going to tell you some stories. 2 Chronicles 5, 13. Indeed, it came to pass when the trumpeters and singers were as one to make one sound to be heard in praising and thanking the Lord, when they lifted up their voice with the trumpets and the cymbals and the instruments of music and praised the Lord, saying, for he is good and his mercy endures forever, that the house, the house of the Lord, was filled with a cloud so that the priests could not continue ministering because of the cloud, for the glory of the Lord filled the house of God. And I went, I saw that years ago. I thought, God, can we have that again? What would it be like if the cloud of God came into the room and the preachers can't stand up and the worship team, right in the middle of the worship, you know, it's boom, down they go. I went to Bible school in 1983 and I began to hear the fathers of the faith tell us stories about what they'd seen and what they'd, what they'd walked in. You know, when the fathers tell the stories, it, 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 it's an anthem in the spirit for the next generation. It's a, it's a statement in the spirit. It's a marker. It's a benchmark. Because if we don't know what we had in the smaller glory, then when the greater glory comes, we won't, we won't know what to do with it. And I, that's why I remember saying to my wife, I don't know enough about how the anointing works. I don't know enough how to sense the anointing. Is it just my emotions I'm feeling? Or is it the Spirit of God that's impressing me? I don't know the difference between those two. And it became our pursuit. And I remember going to Bible school. And there was a, 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 we had classes in the morning, and then because we were Canadian students, we couldn't work. And so I would go to prayer school and healing school in the afternoon. And I remember one time in prayer school, which went for about an hour, and then right after that, Brother Hagin would always come in and teach in healing school. And I remember in prayer school, there was just a, an inordinate level of anointing. It was, just, it was just stronger. You just could feel the, I call it the juice. You know, man, the juice was there now. And... 
And, and, and we finished our, our prayer school, went right into the healing school. And uh, Brother Hagin got up and, and, and he said to the worship team, he said, just keep, keep, keep worshiping there for a few minutes. And, you know, you get to know somebody by their anointing. You get to know when their anointing is going to go a certain way. You, you follow. You become familiar with the flow on somebody else's gift. And then you can track with them. And it's easier for you to receive from them once you recognize, oh, he's, he's, doing, he's talking like this. When he talks like this, this always happens. And he said that. And he said to the worship team, he said, just keep going. And they kept going. And, and something just started to go into the room. And I remember because I'd heard him tell stories about the glory. I'm going to tell you a couple of those stories. I'd heard him tell stories about when the cloud of God filled the room. And from the back of the room, the rows of people began to disappear. And he's standing at the pulpit preaching his message. And row by row, the people began to disappear until the cloud came right up to the front. And he couldn't see anybody at all. And he was instantly taken out of his body. And God showed him something else about his ministry. He didn't know how long he was out of his body. He was taken in a car to another place. He sat in the back of this car and saw something that was happening between two people that were people that he was connected with that would have been greatly detrimental to his ministry. And he said, I was sitting there in the car. I heard the conversation. I watched what they did. And then suddenly I was back in my body. And uh, he, it's funny because he asked his wife afterwards. He said, did you notice anything different about my preaching today? She was sitting there and she said, yeah, she said, there was a 15-minute stretch where you just preached like a house of fire. He realized that was the time when he wasn't in his body. <laughs> so I'd heard him tell stories like that. And here we are in, in healing school in the afternoon. And instead of healing, I, I, I looked up and he was doing as he was wont to do. He would just walk back and forth like this. And, and he, he was just walking back and forth. And he said, the glory's here. The glory's here. The glory's here. And I was standing right over there. And I remember thinking, oh, oh it's so strong. Before he got up and said anything, I just, I could feel this. I didn't know the definition of kabod, the heavy weightiness of God. I, I didn't know any of that yet. I just thought, oh, God. And I remember Thinking to myself, I need to lay on the floor. You didn't lay on the floor in 1983. It wasn't in. <laughs> Nobody laid on the floor. And you especially didn't do it in the middle of the word faith movement where we showed up with suits and ties and we did everything in excellence. And to lie on the floor, I mean, you just, it just wasn't like it was like, ushers, go check that guy out. See what's wrong with him. Did he have a heart attack? But here's what I remember. The presence was so strong that I, I thought... And I, I wasn't a floor liar. I'm, I'm not, typically I'm not the most, you know, the, the most sensitive bulb in the building. There's some of you that light up way sooner than I light up. I've got intercessors, you know, that they'll be, they'll be, we'll be worshiping and they'll be, and they'll, they'll, they'll be like, whoa, and I'll be like, what? And they'll say, man, I don't know. It's, some of my intercessors are so sensitive an angel can burp a mile away and they're like, whoa. <laughs> and I'm like, and I don't feel anything. So I've, I've never been touchy-feely. So I'm standing over here, and, and I'm like, man, I, need to, I just need to lay on the ground. And Brother Hagin's walking back and forth, you know, just talking in tongues. And so I stopped, and I went like this. I just, I just looked around to see, you know, what, what's everybody else doing? Because I always like to get up close to the front. Because, you know, if you're sitting back further, you get beside some great big tall guy, or especially in the States, we were in Tulsa, you get beside some woman with big hair and you can't see any of the whole service. You're going like this, <laughs> trying to see the preacher. And, and I remember just kind of turning around and looking, and already probably 50% of the people in the room were already laid on the floor. And then I got convicted because I thought, man, am I ever dense? They got it before I did. But here's the thing I remember that, that I didn't know what to do with. Right in the back row... There was a couple of families, and they were standing there like this. <laughs> and and I, my thought was this. How can they not feel this? And it wasn't any judgment. I didn't understand. I thought, how can they not feel this as I got down on the floor and laid there? I didn't see anything. I've never seen the physical glory with my eyes. 
But I found out a long time ago that, my, that seeing for me is not the way that the gift works for me. I'm a feeler. I feel it. I'm, I feel like, whoa, okay, whoa, God, what is that? Yeah, there it is, there it is, there it is, there it is. And I, and I, and I had to get used to that. I remember one time Brother Hagin was telling us the story that most of you may, or some of you may remember, but uh, he was diagnosed with a heart disease as a young boy and was bed fast for a number of years. Well, he died and left his body. And he, he left his body three times. And, and the first time and the second time, he said he left his body and he went down through a hole and he could see the lights of earth receding above him. And as he descended, he said he descended to, into absolute pitch black and he looked down. And as he looked down, he could see that there was lights flickering on what looked like a wall. And he came down and as he came down, he, he, he saw into the doorway or the cavern of hell. As he did, there was a creature there that came to escort him in by the arm. And on the way down, when he realized what was happening, he said, God, I go to church. God, I read my Bible. God, God, this can't be happening. But his soul continued to descend. And this creature came. And as soon as the creature reached out to grab his hand, a voice spoke from somewhere outside of that in a language he didn't understand. And the whole place went like that and shook. And the creature took his hand off and his, his spirit or his soul went, went back up and went in his body. That happened three times. On the third time that it happened, he cried out and he said, Jesus, have mercy on me for I'm a sinner because his spirit knew the truth. Have mercy on me as he was leaving his body. And his aunt said, who, who took care of him, or his grandma said, she said, when you were leaving your body, she said, I could hear your voice and it sounded like you were speaking through a tunnel. And he cried out for mercy. And instead of going down as he was leaving his body, he instantly was transformed from death to life and he went up. And when he went up, he said, I saw heaven. And he said, I saw it coming closer and closer and closer. And I won't go into all the details of the story, but he said he got close. He said, I was like a million miles away. And he said, I thought I was going home to the heavenly city. He said, I could see a million miles away people as small as ants, but I could see them clearly just like I see you standing right in front of me. And the Lord said to him, he said, you have to go back. What he told us about was what was happening while his spirit was in heaven. He said, when my spirit left my body and went up, he said, the glory of the Lord. My, my grandma came running upstairs because she heard my voice again. And she opened my door and she said, there was a wall of light in, in the door. And, and she, she thought, you know, Kenny must be dying. And so she tried to go in and she hit the wall like you would hit a, 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 a fibrous membrane or something like that. And he said, you know, my old granny, my old Pentecostal granny said she backed up across the hallway and she took a run at that thing. She ran across the hallway and, and she told them all this afterwards. She hit that thing, knocked her right over flat like that. So she thought, well, this is the glory of his home going. He's going and then the Lord said, then the angels have come to meet him. And so she sat on the other side of the hallway waiting and as she was waiting, slowly from the floor up, the glory began to lift. And when she saw that she could see through to the bed, apparently she was a nurse, she went into the bedroom and she crawled across underneath. And, and she told them all this later. She said, I, I made a mistake. She said, I lifted my head up to look and see where I was. Because once you get in that atmosphere, your, your physical senses become largely suspended. People have visions of Jesus, and they, they, they come back to themselves afterwards, and they say, man, I, I, what about all those questions? I had Jesus. I could have asked him this and this and this and this. And the Lord told him in years succeeding that, he said, the reason that those questions don't come up is because those questions aren't in your spirit. They're in your mind. He said, the ones that are in your spirit, those are the things that come up because those are the ones that I've planted there, and those are the ones that I... And so she crawled across the room, but the problem was she lifted her head up into the glory. As soon as she put her head in the glory, the anointing hit her, and she laid out on the floor. <laughs> and you hear that as a young man who's called to do this and, and find the glory and, and, and create an environment where when, I, when we come together as people, God comes. 
My greatest desire, more than anything else, more than big church or, 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 or popularity or any of those things, I want his glory to come into the room. I have tasted when his glory comes. I have tasted when you can't do anything but weep. You can't do anything but shout. You can't do anything but lie on the floor because it's just so strong. There's nothing you can do. And that presence in five minutes will change people better than a year's worth of my best sermons. I hunger for that presence. I won't be denied that presence. I won't be denied. So you hear stories like that. He said one time they were in her church. Now, I'm telling you some of the stories of the fathers just to encourage your heart. Then we'll, we'll tell some of our own. He said he was sitting. He was kneeling in a prayer meeting. They, they were having their weekly prayer meeting. He said he was kneeling in front of his chair, and the Spirit of the Lord spoke to him and said, get up and sit in your chair. Well, that was unusual. If you, those of you that are uh, old-time Pentecostal, full gospel people, always they prayed kneeling down in front of the chairs. It was just a standard thing. Well, back in those days, the Pentecostal churches had the chairs up on the platform. That's where the minister sat, and they'd come up, and some of you are familiar with that. So he's, sitting on the, he's kneeling on the platform, so he just, he just uh, turned around and sat on his chair. And the Lord said, watch. And he didn't know what was going to happen. So he sat there, and he just was praying quietly, and he said, all of a sudden, it was like a flash went off. <laughs> and he said, at that moment... Everybody in the room was instantly healed of everything they had. He said, I only saw that one other time in all my years of ministry. And you see, the reason I'm telling you this is because the reason they told us this was that the last revival that you and I, I absolutely believe are going to be a part of, that the last revival will contain all the elements of all the other revivals, and it'll be seven and eight times stronger than anything we've ever seen. And the revivals that changed America, the Great Awakenings, happened when America was at its lowest moral ebb, right where we are in Canada. He said he was in another service. It was a Sunday night service. And he said the Lord spoke. They were doing the, ser- the, the, the prayer again, just a prayer time in the service. And he said the Lord spoke to his heart and said, get up again. This was, I don't know how many years part of these things. He said, get up. So he got up and sat in his chair. Didn't know what was going to happen. Forgotten all about the other one years ago. He said the same thing happened. Suddenly like a flashbulb. And he said, instantaneously, this is in church, instantaneously, every unsaved person that had been in the building was translated to the front, giving their heart to Jesus at the altar on their knees, like that. He said, I saw the bodies with my eyes that weren't there. And suddenly the altar was filled with people on their knees weeping and crying out to God. We've sold him short on what he wants to do. The Lord told Bill Hammond a number of years ago, my people have lowered their expectations of me. When I heard him say that, I said, God, forgive me. I've done the same thing. Renew your miracles in our day. What does it look like? You can help change the spiritual climate of Canada by partnering with Lifeline today and receive some thank you gifts from Dick and Joan DeWert. Partner at $25 a month and receive Dick's CD message entitled Embracing the New, a dynamic, faith-filled message that will set the stage for you in 2018. Partner at $50 a month and get the CD message and Joan's new booklet, Five Hours in Heaven, telling of her visit to heaven. It's glorious, encouraging, and will thrill you with details of our heavenly home. Partner at $100 a month and we'll send you the CD, Joan's book, plus his beautifully bound leather journaling Bible. Joan will personally sign your Bible and include a note of encouragement just for you. Don't wait. Call now with your partner pledge at 403-942-0123. In Psalm 43, verse 5, David says, Why am I discouraged? Why is my heart so sad? I will put my hope in God. I will praise him again, my Savior and my God. Are you discouraged today? Is your heart sad? 
Maybe you lost a loved one. Maybe you didn't get the job that you were hoping for. Maybe you find yourself in a broken relationship. Will you be like David? He made a choice. He said, I will. I will put my hope in God. I will praise him, my Savior and my God. Whatever your need today, we want you to call the prayer center. There are intercessors standing by to pray with you, to encourage you from God's word, to help you get your focus back on your Savior and your God. Give us a call right now. Wow, that's Craig Broker. If, that's classic Craig Broker, isn't it? Yeah, and it is. uh, what a powerful message. You know, I don't want to mention to you that we've archived all of those Dominion Conference messages. We've taken clips in this uh, mm -hmm. program and a couple previous, and you can go and see the full message or the full service, actually. Yes, and they include the worship, Dick, which is so, well, so key because it's the worship every time that brings us to where we need to go. Well, there are a lot of things happened in the, the conference in the worship time, <laughs> uh, maybe a lot more than even any other time. Yeah. But uh, just so you know, uh, go to our website, uh, dickandjoan.com. You can find the archive there at the live stream. Of course, uh, uh, it's uh, there available, mm. and you can view any uh, and all of the uh, mm. services. So, Joan, uh, you know, uh, you know, we've uh, been saying this. It, it became spontaneously, I might add. The theme of our conference yeah. was about it's time for the glory. It's, it's time, time for the glory. to see the glory. <laughs> and, of course, we're not wrong in saying that because the Bible yeah. prophesies that this would happen. And, Dick, I just, I need to say this. Um, the glory always comes in worship. And so, in, as we've been listening to this clip, I just felt in my heart that if I needed to share this, if you're a worship leader, if you are a pastor, you know, we see so many churches shortening their worship time and making it into more of a concert than a time of, it's not about me, but it's about worshiping God. You know what? If God comes in his glory, it's going to be because his people are worshiping him. And I remember Ruth Ward Heflin, she used to say this, we praise to the spirit of worship comes and then we worship until the glory comes. And when the glory comes, we just stand in the glory and watch what God does. Mm. And you know, this is what we're longing for. This is what we're talking about when we're saying this next wave of God is going to be a wave of his glory that will be like nothing we've ever seen before. And I'm talking to people who have, you know, especially I had a word of knowledge for one mom and dad, your kids are caught up into drugs and your the atmosphere in your home is one one of such, um, uh, well, I saw confusion, but I also saw just such an oppression in your home. And I felt the word of the Lord to you was to put on worship music in your home because as your home is filled with worship something is going to change in the atmosphere and i really believe that it's going to change the hearts of your children yeah wow that's powerful amen i feel there's someone uh actually by the name of matt hmm. uh, coincidentally I, we have a son named matt but uh <laughs> this but you're a very young man uh, you're a part of a worship team in the church. You're serving mm. in your worship team. And I really feel I have a word for you that you, the call of God to be a primary worship leader uh, is on your life. That God is actually going to use you far more powerfully than you actually perceive right now. There's mm. a greater call on your life then, is what I'm sensing, mm. than what you're sensing right now. But you are serving in a worship team right now. And uh, so I just want to encourage you with this. You need to pursue this. You need to give yourself to it because God wants to move through your life mm. and he wants to use you in a special way. And then your name is Matt <laughs> and uh, for, for some wow. reason. And why don't you contact us and uh, let us know about that because then the prayer center will pray and agree with you for God to open doors, right? Mm -hmm. and or Dick, uh, maybe somebody has a son whose name is Matt. If they're not watching, tell your son. You, yeah, there was this word possible. and have him watch the program. Yeah. That's happened before, it by the way, on some of our uh, programs. So, yeah. yeah, you know, when we talk about the glory, I mean, it's, um, it seems like that comes in waves, mm -hmm. that there are times when it's far more pronounced, yeah. and we hear about it a lot more, and then there's been times where it's not as pronounced. And it seems like we've been in one of those seasons. 
yeah. where there hasn't been as it's many manifestations of the glory. That does not mean mm -hmm. it's not valid yeah. or it doesn't exist mm -hmm. or it's for the past. That's Ill. Those are not but relevant. But Dick, there is a coming wave of God's exactly. glory. We talk about it all the time. We anticipate it. Even as I talk about it, I just feel like weeping because I, I live for the glory. And it's coming. Craig says, what will it look like? It'll, it will encompass everything that we've ever seen in the glory in the past, but many times more because this wave of the glory that's coming will never wane until Jesus comes. That's true. Because there is a tremendous, tremendous harvest that has to come in. And Dick, I loved the story he told about how when the wave of the glory came in that all of a sudden the altar was filled with people who mm -hmm. needed to accept Jesus as their savior. No one called them to the altar. And then there were other times when the glory came into the room and every single person who had a need for healing was instantly healed and no one laid hands on them. Mm -hmm. That's what I live for and that's what we're believing for. And that's what we know is we are right on the cusp of it. We're right on it's the edge of that wave of glory. I also like what Craig said as he said, usually that wave of glory or that wave of revival comes to a nation or nations when they're at their the lowest, lowest ebb. Yeah. And he said, and here we are in Canada. Canada needs the glory. And that's why we do Dominion conferences and believe for the glory of God to yeah. come to the Amen. nation. And, and release a prophetic word, which by the way, always precedes the glory. It says that John the Baptist came in the spirit of Elijah yeah. to prepare the way for the Lord. Mm -hmm. You know, when there is uh, something great going to happen, something powerful, something mm -hmm. that God is going to do in the earth, he's going to send the prophetic word as a preparation. That's right. And that's why we do those kinds of things. And that's why our ministry focuses much on that, mm -hmm. not exclusively, but much no. on that. And we are glad you're a part of it. Yeah doesn't happen without your partnership. You know, we've done a That's lot right. of stuff here just recently <laughs> by faith. We bought all this new TV equipment so that we could do this in our own building. This is, yeah. again, uh, an episode that's coming out of our new television set mm -hmm. in our new building, which is about a year old. And uh, we're, uh, we're really facing quite a few expenses because of that, uh, upgrading and so forth. Thank <laughs> God he's provided along the way. He has. And we just want to he's thank good. you for sowing a very special seed. Yeah, we really Amen. could use your financial help and your partnership is really deeply appreciated because some great things are coming ahead. Amen. Lord, we pray for those who are viewing today. Yes, Lord. We pray for the spirit of glory to come mm. to their home. Because you said the whole earth will be filled with your glory. It won't miss anybody. That's right. And so, Lord, we pray for them to experience your Thank grace, you, your glory, your peace, and your joy in Jesus' name. Okay. And just see a troubled person just sense the peace of God just came on you wow. as we prayed that prayer. That's awesome. Well, remember this. God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. See you next time. Yeah. Bless you. Bye-bye. Bye -bye. This program is supported by viewers like you, and we thank you for your partnership. We want to hear from you. Send us your prayer requests, praise reports, and comments on the program. Be sure to visit our website for up-to-date information or get in touch with us by email or phone. And don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. Dick and Joan are now available for conferences and events in your area. To book them for your event, call 587-425-425. 5730 or email info at dickandjoan.com.